best. It was the best uh, 24, 48 hours of the year. Uh, everything comes to uh, a head there. You know everybody you're talking about. You do business with them in different ways for years. And then uh, people are bluffing. People are still bluffing. A 24-hour period at this time of year is like a week. Give us a bluff. Give like, us a bluff. Oh, well, I'll never trade this guy. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. Then at, at 12.30 with a 1 o'clock deadline, hey, I know you've got interest in so-and-so. <laughs> uh, we're, we're ready to move him now. I mean, all kinds of stuff like that happens all the time. And, uh, you know, there were there's so many different things that, that you go through that uh, uh, are invigorating and then disappointing. You know, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. We had a chance yeah. to get uh, in 08. We had a chance to get CC Sabathia. If you look at the history of CC Sabathia, Cleveland Indian, and then he gets traded to Milwaukee. And if you look it up, I'm pretty sure you'll find it was a Monday or a Tuesday that he gets traded. The Saturday before that, I was I was on the, the five yard line, with not 95 to go, with five to go, wow. Rodney, to uh, acquire him, Casey Blake, and Jamie Carroll. And if you remember, Rafael Fercal had had a bad back, and he was out, and so I needed a shortstop. And, and, and third base was still a little bit uh, injury prone. So I needed a third baseman. And I needed a leader like Casey Blake, who's a, a man, a man, a man. And um, CeCe Zabathia may have been our, our best pitcher if we were able to acquire him. And it was going to take four prospects plus Carlos Santana, who was a young player mm -hmm. in our system, was in Rancho Cucamonga, or in uh, San Bernardino at the time, high A. And uh, we didn't think he would be a big league catcher. We always thought he would hit. But we didn't think he was going to catch. Plus, we had this this young guy who was an all star that was not going to be displaced anytime soon. A guy named Russell Martin. <laughs> so we had a little bit of surplus there to deal. Right. And uh, it came down to it, and it was a Saturday, and uh, we were playing the Giants. I never forget it. And uh, sitting in the uh, manager's office, and, and Joe Torrey was our manager, and he was I had run it by him, and he was excited about doing it. And then uh, we had a meeting uh, at the upper levels with the the highest levels you could go to, and uh, and they they bought that. Wow. And they oh. and, and they shot it down at that point in time. And this was this was if you look again back at the CC Sabathia situation, that was not a deadline deal. He got traded in the middle of July, mm -hmm. so it was it was even more valuable because you were going to have him for two or three more starts than you would if you got him on the thirty first of July. Right. But look at you know the history will tell you when he got traded. He got traded from Cleveland to Milwaukee. Monday or Tuesday they announced it. Uh, they went from me at uh, six o'clock uh, Pacific time on a Saturday when I said you know I, I can't do this. To uh, to call in the Brewers and and make and a deal and CC Sabathia was one of the key reasons why that team made it made it as far as they made it that year championship type player I mean still pitching today many many years later um, anyway so you have things like that that come about too How, how'd you get Manny Ramirez Manny Ramirez was amazing um, I had talked Theo Epstein who was running the Red Sox at that time had called me probably early July and had asked me about Andy LaRoche our third baseman, young third baseman. And um, he says, uh, I said, well, you know, I'm not really inclined to do that. Uh, what do you got in mind? Of? Just so I could get a, a reading on how interested he was. And he mentioned this pitcher who was a 4A guy. 4A, I mean, uh, he's really a triple-A pitcher that come to big leagues once in a while, but he's not gonna he's not gonna stick. There's no 4A league, but you're kind of, you know, you're, you're kind of caught between the two. And I said, no, it didn't interest me. I said, you know, and I hung up and I thought, you know, he's got Mike Lowell over there and Kevin Euclid, you know, there, there's probably, Got some three-way deal, you know, cooking in the back of his mind. Brilliant guy, Theo. So weeks go by, and it's like two days before the deadline in 08. It's like the, like today, perhaps, you know, in, in 2008. And Theo calls me at like uh, six o'clock at night, and um, calls me. And I'm watching TV. I'm watching the bottom line go through all the rumors that are being circulated. And he says, "Hey, I want to come back to you about Andy LaRoche." And I said, Theo, I said, if you're, if you're coming back to me with the same four-way pitcher, I got no interest. I said, I'm not inclined to do this. You know, I, I'm just not inclined to do it. And uh, as I'm talking to him, on the bottom line of whatever it was, MLB Network or ESPN or something, it says that the Red Sox, the Marlins, and the Pirates are about to make a three-way deal. And Jason Bay is going to go to the Red Sox. Manny is going to go to the Marlins. So this is why you're on the phone with him. You're seeing this. I, I, I'm talking to him, and I and I said, hey, by the way, I see, I see you got you're going to get rid of Manny, you know, because Manny was kind of burning the house down a yeah. little bit in, in Boston. You know, him and the club, yeah. it was like it was a, a toxic situation that he had to they had to alleviate. And you know, like I, I'm far from a genius. I'm far, you know, from anything. But you know, I do read people. I read conversations. And I read ton, tone of voice, I read anxiety, I read confidence. And I've known Theo for a handful of years already at this point in time. And he goes, um, 
I'm not. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know how to say. It. I'm not sure that 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 that's going to happen. I thought, oh, geez, well, too bad. I said, but you know, any road's going back to that, you know, we, we're not doing that. So at the end of the night, and I filed it, at the end of the night, it actually was the 30, the 30th of July because it was the day before the deadline. End of the night, I go down to see Joe, Tori, and uh, the only deal I had working was Greg Maddox coming back from San Diego. I acquired him from the Cubs in 06 at the deadline, and then I, I wanted to get him back, not only for what he had left as a pitcher, but I thought him sitting next to a Clayton Kershaw, yeah. a young Clayton Kershaw, was going to be like you know a doctor going to you know the greatest medical school in the world to right. learn the craft, you know, and he could still pitch. And I knew Greg since he was 18 years old. I had him with the Cubs, so I had that working. But we were we were in a position where we had to get teams to pay the salary of the players. So I can remember Kevin Towers, and you know, God bless him, died a couple of years ago. One of my dear friends, but also a guy we competed like cat and dog. And I can remember, you know, he's talking about Max. He goes, you know, I'll trade him to you because you know we're not going to win. And this is going to be his last year. He deserves to have a chance to get to one more World Series. I said, well, if I if I do this, I'm going to need, you know, I'm going to need you to pay the salary. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, let me get this right. The lowly San Diego Padres, the little San Diego Padres, are going to give the Dodgers Greg Maddox, future Hall of Famer Greg Maddox, and two and a half million dollars. I said, you got that right. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's and the he deal. Goes, he goes, I can't do that. He said, you know, I get laughed out of here. I said, well, think about it as time goes on. And we ended up getting Maddox actually in the middle of August. But that's the only deal I had cooking at that point in time. All right. And I went down to the clubhouse, and I saw, met with Joe after the game. And he said, what's going on? I said, the Maddox thing it may happen, but it's going to be down the road. It's going to be after the deadline. And I said, but let me ask you something. I said, I said and, and don't take this any further in your thought process. What about Manny Ramirez? And he looked at me, and he goes, you're kidding me, right? Manny Ramirez? I says, yeah. He says, you know, I manage him in the All-Star Games. I've managed against him all the years, Yankees, Red Sox. He goes, might be the greatest right-handed hitter in the game today. You can get Manny. I said, Joe, you're taking it too far. <laughs> I said, I can do anything. I just wanted to, because things are going to go quick. I mean, we're about right. 13 hours away from the 1 o'clock deadline. Because he could have said, oh, hell no. I don't yeah, I mean, yeah, and if he did that, yeah. I was done. Because right. I'd never put anybody in the room. I would never put yeah. anybody in the room that the manager didn't want. You're talking about, right. you have no chance to make that work. Um, so, and he was like, like, fine. I said, Joe, go home and take it, you know, go to sleep, <laughs> relax, relax. Just, I doubt this is gonna happen. So, I go home, leave the office about two o'clock, get home about three o'clock. I take about a two hour nap. It's like final exams week. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're sleeping only because you need to, to catch your breath. And I get up about five and I get a, a note from Theo. And he says, call me right away. Call Theo. This is the night, by the way. I, you know, I, 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 don't, I, didn't, I don't have my uh, my cowboy boots on today because I had a lot of walking to do today. But I was always wearing. I was so tired when I got home. I woke up at five o'clock and I still had my suit and my boots. You know, it was, you know, true story. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And so I called, I called Theo and I said, "What's up?" And he goes, uh, uh, "Manny Ramirez." I said, "Yeah." And he goes, "You have an interest." I says. Of course I have an interest. I said, but I have to tell you something. <laughs> and he says, what? I says, Manny's owed like seven to seven and a half million dollars, right? He goes, yeah. I said, if you're gonna send me Manny Ramirez, you're gonna send me a truck with a lot of money in it too, because I don't have any money. And he goes, you don't have any money? I said, if I had money, I'd have CC Sabathia, Casey Blake, and Jamie Carroll here. But I don't have any money. So before I go anywhere else with this, or before you go anywhere else with this, Understand, you're going to send me Manny Ramirez, and you're going to pay the rest of his contract. And he goes, "You got to be kidding me!" <laughs> I go, I'm just telling you the truth. He says, and he, and he was kind of playing it and trying to see if it was just a negotiation ploy. He goes, "How about if we split it?" I said, "Theo, we've known each other a long time. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not clowning with you. This is, this is the way it's going to have to be." So I said, "You know, go talk to your ownership, and uh, if you got interest in doing this, call me." So, like 9 o'clock, uh, I'm at the ballpark and my phone rings and it's Theo and he goes, uh, uh, you know, he says, you sure you can't pay anything? I says, I, I, can, I, I, can, I, can, I can barely fly him here, okay? <laughs> and, and so he says, oh, all right, uh, you know, I've got a three-way working. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you about some players. I said, but now after seeing that thing on, online the night before, I thought, well, Pittsburgh's the other team in this. Because he had to get a player to replace Manny, which yeah. turned out to be Jason Bay. So I said, I said, let's cut to the chase. Is it Pittsburgh? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, I've been talking to Neil Huntington for, for weeks, so I know kind of who he likes on our team. Let me, you know, uh, 
let me think about it. And he said, well, I need Andy LaRoche. Pittsburgh really needs Andy LaRoche. And that's, that's where this came from going back almost a month. I said, I'll do it. I'll put Andy in that type of deal. And he says, and they need a pitcher back. And he gave me two names. He gave me James McDonald and Brian Morris. I said, all right, let me think about it. I said, but, you know, I need confirmation because at the deadline, you don't have time to, right. to take a call that's a hoax or somebody's just shopping or fishing. I mean, it's, that day, it's like, it's only real. Yeah, you gotta be no, real. No, more, you know, no more bluff, no more this or that. So I said, you know, I'm going to need you on the line with Frank McCord, who was our owner, and, and we'll talk this over with your ownership so everybody understands what the deal is. Because I don't want to come and back where you, you walk the walk, you walk the walk, you get excited about it, yeah. and then Boston says, I didn't say that. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seven and a half million dollars. What are you out of your mind? <laughs> you know, who would do that, right? right? And so we did that, like 10 o'clock, 10 30 in the morning, and we, everybody got on the phone John Henry, I think, or Larry Lucchino, you know, about the Boston ownership group, and, and Frank and myself, and, and Theo, and we, and we talked through it. And they said, Yeah, we'll do it. So now we had to get Pittsburgh involved. And I had to make a decision on Brian Morris or James McDonald, two young right-handed pitchers, both ended up in the big leagues for a while. So as we're walking this walk now, and now it's like 10 to 1, and at 1 o'clock, the door closes. It's not 105 or 101. It, yeah. It's locked down. And because we're getting $7.5 million back, the commissioner of baseball has got to approve the deal. Okay. So we do a three-way call, a four-way call, really. We get Rob Manford, who was the number two behind Commissioner C. Right. Rob Manford, myself, Frank, Neil Huntington, Frank Cooley, who used to work with Rob Manford. He's the president of the Pirates. And then Theo and, and maybe John Henry or Larry Lucchino or, or somebody of that um, you know, that group. And we're on a conference call. And, and Rob says, okay, uh, Ned, uh, your side of the deal. What are you doing? I said, well, we're acquiring Manny Ramirez from the Boston Red Sox and $7.5 million, <laughs> and we're trading them, Andy LaRoche, and we made the decision to trade Brian Morris. Brian Morris and Andy LaRoche. And then he went to Boston, and Boston said their part, Pittsburgh said their part, and, and they blessed the deal. And, the, and it was like one o'clock, right, boom, right then and there. So my staff, I come out, and uh, you know, I'm, like, I'm like flying now, because we just There's changed the there, franchise, there. like in a heartbeat. And, and, and 24 hours earlier, this wasn't even a dream, right? right. And I'm flying, and, I, and I, I tell the staff, and everybody's really excited about it. So now we've got to call the players, because I always wanted to tell the player. I, I didn't want Andy LaRoche or Brian Morris seeing it yeah. on, on a network or you know right. Twitter. I don't know if even Twitter was alive then. But whatever, you know, I didn't want that. And so it took me a little while to track those guys down. So in the meantime, we have the baseball network on. I think it was the baseball network, or maybe ESPN, whatever. And they got the big show on, the trading deadline. And they are roasting the Red Sox for not trading Manny Ramirez. Because nothing, be, nothing could be announced yet. MLB knew what right. was going on, so it was all done. But we all took the time to call the, the respective players. And so that took time. And it was maybe 2 o'clock by the time we were able to announce it all. And one other funny little antidote to it. Mitch Poole, a longtime clubhouse guy for the, for the Dodgers, who was instrumental in the yeah, Kirk Gibson home Mitch, run. Yeah, yeah. He, gets a call, here, he gets a call from the Red Sox equipment guy, his counterpart, uh -huh. and says, hey, let me give you Manny's you know, shoe size and hat size and this and that. <laughs> and he goes, what are you calling me for? <laughs> and he goes, because Manny Ramirez is going. He goes, get out of here, Manny Ramirez isn't coming. <laughs> so anyway, that's one of the better stories. I love it.